All right, everybody, this is another sketchbook summer. Um, this one's gonna be a little more loose, um, but I will be talking about thumbnails and um, composition, because um, sketchbooks are a really good tool to practice different compositions and um, playing around with, like if you have like a, a character illustration that you're doing or a painting that you're gonna do, um, trying out different configurations on whatever, uh, whatever like canvas or or if it's like a digital thing or paper or whatever you have. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, how to do that in your sketchbook, um, but it's going to be a little bit more loose. So if you are working on a project um, and you want to keep working on that, like a studio time, that's okay too. We don't have like one big project that the whole class is going to do together for this one. Okay, I think, um, Nathaniel, did you have a, your hand up? Those look like stickers. Are those stickers that you made? That is awesome. That's so cool. Thank you. Oh, I love the eyes. That's so cool. Was it hard to make the uh, stickers? Uh, no. No? Really easy? Do you have one of those things where they just print it out on sticker paper at your house? No, did you send no. out? No. Uh, a company made them and then ah. it's the picture. That's really cool. Okay, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and start with the sketchbook stuff. Yeah. This over here. So today what we're going to talk about, I'm just going to draw here for a little bit first. So I'm going to talk about thumbnails. I'm not always the best with remembering to thumbnail my stuff, but they are a really good tool um, in your sketchbook. If you want to work out what a finished image is going to look like, sometimes it's helpful to make thumbnails. Um, so the reason is it's like drawing a mini version of what you're going to paint or what you're going to draw. Um, and the name comes from like you want it to be the size of the thumbnail. I don't literally make it that small. You know, if it's a long rectangle like this. Um, I would draw whatever I think my image is going to be in this square and then if I get a different idea and I want to try something else you know they're really fast and quick because they're so small and so sketchy so what I was going to do today is I'm going to play around with one of the characters from last week I'm going to try to do a, f a more finished composition with this kiwi fish thing right so what I think I'd want to do with it is have the character flying through the air. It has a spring for a tail. You know, so I have it launching like it's going to fly off its little spring going up like this. So I need something down here in this corner. I'm just going to do this like a cliff or something like that for it to launch off of, right? So I could try different things. Maybe I want to make the character bigger. It's a little more obvious. So you see, I'm not being super detailed. Maybe the spring is going back in space. I'm going to draw its feet. Maybe the character is going forward so it's a bigger. And then this cliff could be a little smaller. So it's a little less flat, right? So you can play around with size and shape and like what you're going to put in the background and things like that. 
Hey, Heather. Liliana is there. Hey, hello. Hey, Liliana. Hey, Emma. Just saw you guys. So I'm just talking about thumbnails, um, which if you don't know what those are, it's tiny sketches that you do to figure out what a bigger finished image would be. So you get all of your ideas out in tiny form. And then when you go to do the real thing on like a full piece of paper, you know what you're doing and you know where everything is gonna go. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what makes a good composition um, and an interesting composition versus an uninteresting one. And then I'll kind of let you guys go and see what you can come up with. And if you have another project that you're working on, that's okay too. You can do that. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the rule of thirds. Has anybody heard of the rule of thirds or want to guess what it might be? We're talking about composition. So like how an image is composed. Lilian and Heather, uh, and Heather, do you want to explain to us what the rule of thirds is? And give them just a second. If you want to type it out in the chat, that's cool. It's that one third of the way down a person's face is their eyes. Um, so third down is their nose. Okay, so you're talking about the rule of thirds in terms of faces. Um, so there is a thirds in terms of how we divide up faces. What we're talking about today is for composition of like a whole image. Um, so like where you put things. So like where I would put the, you know, horizon line or the character or, you know, the if I had like a tree in a background, like where I put the tree and stuff like that. So I could, if I say like, I want this character to be the main focal point of my image. Let me show again, this character. I could put him just like smack in the middle of my composition or the middle of my paper, right? What happens when I do that though, there's equal amount of space on all sides. The drawing ends up looking kind of flat, right? It doesn't have a lot of like dynamic movement to it or anything like that. So a lot of times we want to avoid putting things directly in the middle of our paper. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide, like pretend that this is like a canvas for a painting or something like that. Just any kind of image. I'm gonna divide it up into thirds. And it's not gonna be exact, it doesn't have to be exact, but this is roughly one third, two thirds, three thirds. This one ended up kind of small over here. So I'm going to divide it into thirds this way, and then I'm going to divide it into thirds this way as well. If you've ever done photography, this is really common tool in photography as well, or storyboarding, cinematography. So you pretend that this outside box is a canvas or a paper, right, that you're going to put an image on. And we divide it up into thirds this way and thirds this way. So what would we want, what we would want to happen is that everything interesting, instead of putting it smack in the middle, we put it along these lines, right? And it ends up making our image more interesting just with the way that we put our character. So instead of putting the character smack in the middle, maybe I'll have the character around this area here. 
right? And then he's flying in the air, so I'd probably want him more up just to get the idea that the character is flying in the middle like that. And then like the horizon line, right? Where the sky meets the ground. If I put it in the middle, it divides up the paper equally and it looks, it's gonna look more flat. Instead, I'm gonna put my horizon line on this third, right? And I said it was gonna be a cliff, so let's go a little bit higher and just make it like a little cliff thing, I don't know. I haven't quite figured out what's gonna go into this picture and what isn't. But these thirds can help me figure out where to place things so that we have balance in the picture and that things aren't just like smack in the middle, that there's some balance and then we can emphasize certain things. And then if we want to like support this big character right here, maybe I could have like trees and stuff like that and the tops of the trees will hit that third line, you know? So that's what I'm going to play around with today in my sketchbook. I tend to make my thumbnails kind of big. I don't make it the size of my nail. Let me pull back with the camera. So in my sketchbook, I'm going to try different configurations of an image of just this character and see what I can come up with. So if you want in your sketchbook to draw out some image ideas in thumbnail form, can kind of figure out what would be a cool composition for something. Before I move on, did anybody have any questions on what the rule of thirds are? So I have a bunch where it's up in the air kind of around this third. I'm gonna try a different one. Maybe put the character on this side. So nothing's gonna look fancy. This isn't something that you would like, you know, show people as a finished product, but I like the idea of doing a skyline. So I'm gonna do a bunch of trees down here at the bottom. Now, one problem that this one's having is also with the thirds, I can kind of tell where there's a big space, right? So this one has something, this one kind of has something, this corner kind of has something, but there's nothing up here. There's just like a big empty space. Now, I wouldn't want something that's going to take a, too much attention away from my character, but I do want at least something there so it isn't this big empty space. Um, and it really could be anything. Since this is a sky, I could, I could make it nighttime and make it like the moon. You know, maybe some clouds. Yeah, so that's another way you can use the rule of thirds. You wouldn't want, 
something on each of the four corners that's of equal size and equal importance because then you go back to the problem of you know if everything's important nothing is important right it gets a little more flat but you could it could help you figure out oh i need something there that's just like a little thing to kind of support the larger part of my piece Let me zoom in a little more because it's kind of tough to see when I'm drawing small. Another way to use thumbnails, if um, it's hard to draw small, because sometimes I have trouble drawing small. And if I have a pretty good idea what I want to happen in my picture, I'll just kind of sketch out a version of it really quick. Here's my, my kiwi bird. And let's say way down here. I want like a cliff or something. Then you can go in with either like a cutout window or you can just go and figure out where to cut things off, right? So I probably wouldn't want to cut out here. I'd want to cut it out more like this. So then you can figure out what dimensions you'd want. So sometimes you can have an image where you draw multiple windows on it and then figure out what your composition would be for the whole image. Maybe instead of having the clip down here, I could have the clip up here. Make it feel more tall. I kind of like that better. But then I have to change this guy so that he's turned a little bit. I'm gonna draw that off to the side. Make it a little more bumpy, feel more organic. When I want to draw rocks and stuff, I just kind of like, I loosen up my hand and just let the pencil kind of scribble down a path. And it looks more organic than just having a straight line for a rock. Maybe I can have him more with his belly towards the ground like he was trying to fly. It's like, yes. Like a Superman pose. And then I go, okay, we're kind of coming up towards the edge here. I think I want more room. So because I drew so small, I can just extend this thumbnail, make it a little bigger, give it a little more room. So that it's more on a third, right? And then this point would be on a third. So then the, then the, the image feels more like it can breathe. Maybe it's more of a rocky canyon area. Like Ooh, or there's other birds flying. Like it kind of dots. 
the idea of different birds. Something like that. I don't know. I kind of like this one. If you do work digitally, doing sketchbooks, um, doing thumbnails in your sketchbook can actually help you out a lot because if you have a, you can take a picture of the thumbnail with your phone or scan it if you have a scanner and then put that into whatever program you're using to draw on and just blow this up so it's really huge. And then that becomes like your base sketch right and then you can sketch over it for a finished one so it can kind of give be a little uh shortcut sometimes too let's see i want a completely different one for this let's do an underwater one let's see what i can kind of come up with for that So here is my thumbnail. I'm just going to draw in my thirds just for a grid. And then I'm going to have the character over on this side. Yeah, I'll have them looking back this way. Let's have them looking back this way. And then I'm going to have bubbles trailing up to kind of fill out that space. And then instead of like this rock line tree line, I'm going to put it up here instead of down there. So change that up a little bit. And then I still need something for this area. So I could do like a reef or plants or something like that. And then what I was thinking for this one is having like a fish right here. That's like, what is going on with this thing? So there's a bunch of plants, plants. There should be more plants on this side too. So here I'm just shading in what my foreground is just to give it a little more sense of space in multiple colors. So here the blue would be like the foreground. So that's what's in the front the most. And then this would be the middle ground and then this stuff would be the background. Here the character would be more the foreground. So it's kind of up to you. Different artists will figure out different ways that they like to work. Um, some I know some people will do like, they'll completely shade in their thumbnail. So it'll be like a tiny little sketch that's still completely shaded in um, just because they want to get a sense of how the finished thing is going to look as much as possible before they put in all the, the hours and hours to get to a more finished drawing. Like that. I want to just take a step back. I can kind of go. I think I'm I'm liking these two the best. I tend to like my other ones 
the best. Now I haven't done any, so far all of mine have been oriented uh, like landscape way, where it's long this way. I'm gonna try some where they're more vertical, just to see if I like that better. So the rule of thirds would still apply to like a portrait style one like this. I made this one really thin. I may maybe want to make it a little thicker. Like a stretching portrait or something. So the rule of thirds would still apply. I'm just going to loosely, let's use blue. Just loosely divide this one up into thirds. I think this is a bigger section right here. So I'll just need to fix that. Maybe bring pull that in a little more. So the th same thing still applies. I want all of my focal points to be somewhere around here or along this line, this line, this line, or this line. So I'm gonna try one where the character is down here. maybe like the little stump wings are somewhat around this line. They don't have to be completely horizontal. And then we'll have the spring go this way along this line. Have them wall-eyed. <laughs> He's looking in different directions. And then way up here, I think is gonna be the, a cliff. And I'm just gonna go so high that it's almost towards the tip of the page. This. Oh, I forgot his legs. So just to get that feeling that it's falling way down. And we're still a little uh, empty over here on this side because the thirds line aren't gonna be there in the final image. So maybe I'll put some clouds, I don't know. The sun maybe. The feeling of way up high. You can compare that to these ones. So they'll, they'll feel a little bit different. Like the energy of them will be a little bit different. This one feels more laid back because a lot of the, like this thing's eyes are right all along this horizontal line. So things will tend to feel more laid back when they're horizontal like this. And then this one, it's vertical, right? So it's that feeling of falling is a little bit stronger in this one because all the interesting stuff is down this line. So it just depends on what you're going for. Sometimes you want a more, you know, laid back kind of 
feeling and sometimes you want things to feel more dynamic. It just depends on what the drawing is for. I like this one. I think I'm gonna try to do, do more versions of this one. It's a different feeling. Um, does anybody have anything that they would like to share? Anything in their sketchbook or just anything that they've been working on over these last couple of weeks that they wanna share? Yes, 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 yes. Ooh, very enthusiastic. What do we have? All right, so I have an egg. His name's Eggnog. I have <laughs> a blob. His name's Custard. I have two guys with the birds coming out of their hats. I oh call my Mr. Goodness. Mr. So are these all characters that would be in like one story or? They would be in one story and then Maybe in one there's story. a stick figure guy that's always hiding behind a drawing of himself. <laughs> That is awesome. Yeah, I like all I like the egg puns. <laughs> the egg pun characters. Uh, did anybody else have something that they wanted to share? I'm gonna keep up with this. I also need, I feel like this guy that I've been doing needs some a name. I've just been calling him like a kiwi fish bird, um, but I think he needs like an actual name. This one I'm trying. to get him up in the corner. I think I put him too far in the corner, but we'll see what happens. Maybe you could do like something else down here, like a trampling or something. I don't know. That one's kind of small. Let's make it a huge trampling. Goes right off the page. Just to get that like bouncy quality. And then here's where the horizon line would be because that's a third from the bottom. I think that's a good place to put the ground. And then a lot of, I don't know, trees or mountains or something. Could put a bigger tree. Maybe one that's a little closer. You know, I don't know. Just kind of feeling stuff out. So this one feels more energetic to me because it's going up. But this one is kind of slightly funnier because <laughs> it's fine he's falling down. I don't know. Different things. I don't, Nathaniel. I'm trying to think of one. So if you have any ideas for the fish dude. I have an idea. Yeah? Name him Oswald. 
Oswald. Oswald. Yeah, I'll write that down. Name ideas. Oswald. It does look like an Oswald. So here, now that I got a couple, I would probably just pick whichever one is my favorite one, and then that would be my final drawing. Let me put in that. And then sometimes it's helpful to like step away. So when you're looking at it, you can look at it a little bit fresh. Because what I tend to do is like the last thing I drew is my favorite one, um, even though it may not be the best one. It's the one that I just did last, so it's the one um, that I'm the most attached to. Sometimes it is the best one because by the time I get like four or five thumbnails in, I understand what I'm doing a little bit more. <laughs> you know, it's like I've had a little bit more practice, um, but sometimes it's not the best one. It just depends. No. But that's what we have sketchbooks for. We can kind of figure this stuff out. And if you want to know like what something would look like if you just changed like the position of the character or something like that, um, another good trick is to grab post-its. Um, I think I'm out of my tiny post-its, um, but you can always cut them down too. So let's say like I'm thumbnailing and I really like this setup, like this background, but I don't really like the character pose. I can take a post-it, this is too many post-its, take a post-it and then put it over and redraw just the character. Like maybe I want him, let's have him like facing the other way, just, just for like sake of argument. His body's going this way. I don't know why his body would be going this way, but just as an example. And then I just cut down because my post ended up being a little too big. So you just cut it down and stick it on. So then I have a different pose, right? If you, or if you don't like the way that you drew the character, you wanna try drawing it again, but you don't wanna redraw all of the background or something like that, you just put a post-it and fix it and see what happens. Cause this is just for me, this sketches. It's another little, little trick. For how to fix stuff. Do this a lot with hands. Like you draw a hand and then it's like, ah, oh, nah. So we just, you just do a different version and on a post-it and stick it over. And, um, and then when you import it, um, like if you're importing it into a drawing program or just tracing over it on a larger piece of paper, you know, then you wouldn't see the post-it anymore because you'd be doing the whole sketch all in one. I think I'm liking this one the best out of all of that. I think it's the funniest one just because it looks like it's falling to its death but it's so happy. <laughs> like Oswald, the, the bird that can't fly, fish bird. Maybe it could be a two part thing. Like you think it's falling down this huge cliff, but that it actually lands in like a bunch of water. I don't know. To figure out maybe it could be like a comic or something. So 
So we have about 15 minutes left. Does anybody want to share any sketches they've been working on or any characters they've been working on? As I set this up. A very aggressive belly flop. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that could be the, the story. So you have Lillian and Heather Rose. Um, oh, uh, we, we weren't doing the storyboard things you were doing, or I'm sorry, I've forgotten the term, but I was sketching. Ooh, nice. Very awesome. What are you sketching on? Procreate. Procreate. Yeah, yeah. You got like an iPad? Yeah. So is this your own character or are you still figuring it out? Um, sort of. Okay. Let's see what you got. Nice. And this is your own character as well? This yeah. looks like one we did, um... It kind of looks like when we did that week where we like redrew characters in different genres. Was it from that or is this completely different? I just drew a random character. I didn't, I, I only came up with her today as I was drawing her. All right. Yeah, I like the coat, like big coat thing. That's awesome. All right, Tater. Hello, um, this, this is Nix's tale. I finished it earlier today. <laughs> nice. So, so yeah. yeah, if you missed it, Tater's working on a, a redoing a suit that he made a couple years ago. Yeah. That's and cool. I like the colors. That's the tale. <laughs> that's awesome. Do you usually do um, a specific part first, like the tail first, or is it just different? each time on the project or? I, I just kind of do whatever because whatever. I'm working on a different base than I usually do. I just kind of like started with the tail after doing the ears. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Let me make sure I got everybody. So another thing that I do with um, thumbnails are good for individual images, but also um, a lot of you guys have been around for when we do comic books. Um, when you do a comic page, you have to actually arrange the panels onto a piece of paper. So thumbnailing for me is indispensable with that because then I can actually figure out how much space I need for each panel, what each panel is gonna be. So if I'm doing like the belly flop idea, I know that this, just pretend that this is a page in a comic book. I know this would be like the last uh, image, right? So, you know, this of the character, like Oswald would be like right here, and then this would be the fish and stuff like that down here. And I think to maintain this real vertical nature, you know, we would do something like this for the big like plunge where the character's like plunging down 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 you know and like that but if this is the end i still need a setup right so i don't know if oswald would have something over here like maybe he would have some buddies where he's like going i'm gonna jump you know, and I don't know what they would be, you know, but the, just to get an idea of how the page would look, you know, you do little kind of little teeny thumbnails. And it helps that you have a whole story. I don't have a whole story yet. <laughs> Maybe he's like saying, I'm gonna fly. I believe I can fly. Did anybody see Space Jam that just came out? I was going to talk about that too. I saw that on um, like Friday or something. No, yeah. <laughs> I just thought that song. I could not believe. So the, the Space Jam in the 90s had I Believe I Can Fly, and it was like an insanely popular 
Like I could not believe how popular that song was. It's everywhere. And then maybe I don't know what his buddies would be. Would they also be birds, but it's like no. I think Oswald was like a little too confident in himself and just too stupid to know what is going on. Yeah, yeah. Like he clearly can't fly, but you can't tell him that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, th I think so. Yeah, it's like, is he brave or does he just like not understand <laughs> and can't fly? And he just luckily gets saved by landing in, in water. And there could be like over here a big splash. Right. So this isn't a particularly sophisticated drawing at all, right? This is just scribblies. But it kind of gives me an idea of where, if I was going to make like a comic page out of this little story we just came up with, where I'd want to put things. So when I'm going to make a more um, finished sketch and like a prettier sketch, I don't have to keep drawing and erasing and changing stuff and figuring out what I'm going to do. I already kind of know where things are going to go. So I just have to worry about the nuances of how to actually draw the characters and the background and stuff and how everything's going to look. Things like that. So, yeah, some people don't like to thumbnail, but I found thumbnailing actually makes you faster in the long run, you know, just taking a couple minutes to actually do um, your thinking about your composition. And you end up with more interesting pieces. He's the one where you legitimately can't tell if he's brave or stupid, so everyone just assumes both. Yeah. Yeah, that could be it. I'm going to write that down so we don't forget. Like, is he brave or just stupid? We do not know. I never come up with like, here's my fully formed character that I just came up with in five minutes. Like I have to kind of do a bunch of sketches and drawings and thinking about it. So writing, um, um, writing stuff down, like I never regret writing something down because <laughs> you're gonna change your mind later and that's fine. But if you write it down, you can kind of remember, like I forgot it was gonna, he was gonna be just like a chatterbox originally. Right, he just like wouldn't shut up. But yeah. yeah, I kind of like this idea. So now I need to figure out what the people talking to him are gonna look like. Should they be the same like species? but just different shapes. So like they also have nub, uh, nub wings or nub feathers. Yeah, it could be like bowling pin. Maybe have like a long one. Simeon is asking, where do we find the class page description to get the material list? And I, I'll answer that if you don't mind. Oh, okay. um, yeah. So usually the links are um, from the main page go to the class page description. But I think there was an error when they when the page was uh, created for this week. And I noticed that the link actually just goes, it just opens zoom. 
So, um, uh. yeah, I don't know if anyone else noticed that, but so I'm going to make a note and send that along and see if that can be fixed. But it's usually okay, like yeah. when you're on the main page, you just click on the, the, you know, for each class and it should give you uh, the material list and the description. Okay. So yeah, I was like, I didn't really have a, yeah. So for the summer, I've been doing sketchbook summer. So the only materials I really have is just like a sketchbook and whatever you want to draw with. You know, mm -hmm. some people are drawing like on their tablet or, you know, whatever, pencil. I'm using um, Cola Race, which is the animator pencil that um, it's kind of like color pencil, but you can erase with it. Um, so yeah, sometimes people will have materials and sometimes they won't. For these oh, fish lips, there we go. Did we get okay. Okay, so Tater had an idea. Um, one being just really fed up with Oswald. Uh, I'm Oswald. I'm gonna fly. Side character one, no. Side character two, oh, please do fall to your death. I mean, Frida. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So one's kind of like an enabler. What I'm doing here, it's a little bit basic, but I'm just picking really um, basic, basic shapes. So square, this is kind of like a stretched out like bowling ball shape, just to see what they look like, right? Um, so for the side characters, maybe it's more like, this is better, a little eyebrow ridge. Just so we could get some different shapes in here so you can tell the characters apart, um, even though they have a lot of the same features. That's kind of cool. I did not uh, expect to be thumbnailing a comic today. This is kind of random, but I'm glad that we here to this point. Now I'm drawing more characters. So once you start coming up with ideas, they they'll compile along with each other, and people will add to it. And it's really cool. Maybe they have smaller mouths because I kind of want Oswald to be the one with the huge big mouth. All right. Um, did anybody else have any drawings that they wanted to share before we wrap up for today? Yeah. I like to share. Excellent. No. Cool. Did yeah. we have visual? Uh, I was just waiting. I, he needs to yeah. turn his camera on. Okay. Do we want to come back to Nathaniel? Yeah, I was, I was about to say it. Uh, wants to share. Was that Nathaniel? Because I'm seeing, it looks like he's turning it on, but not. Okay. Uh, Liliana, you finished your sketch? Yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah, I like the pose. 
That's really cool. Thank you. Are you going to draw a face or just leave it no face? Oh, I'm probably going to draw a face. Draw a face? Okay. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Did Heather Rose have anything or, or no? You still working on yours, Heather Rose? Yeah? Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Was Nathaniel having was it Nathaniel having problems with getting the video on? I don't see the video yet. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, if we need to do it next week also, we could always do it next week. So this is a good time if um, you are new and haven't heard my spiel yet. Um, we are completely donation based now for these online classes. So if you want to help us keep going um, and offering these for free for people, um, I'm going to have Scott just put up the link for donations. Um, also, if you miss a class, these all are all of these classes are going up on YouTube. If you want to go back and go over something like what is the rule of thirds again, um, you can always look that up on YouTube. And then if you would like to do private classes, we also do private classes. So if you wanted just like a one on one class with me or Ben or Lee or anybody, um, that is available on our website too. Wait! You're back. Yeah. So, yeah, this. Oh, that's awesome. And I drew a tiny new characters, which is based off my dad's drawing. Okay, very cool. They look like the, the frogs. Um, Oh, I'm blanking on its name, but Hello Kitty had like a frog. Oh, yeah, the frog. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that was it. Yeah, I couldn't remember the name. That's awesome. I'm glad you got the camera to work, Nathaniel. <laughs> Technical difficulties are hard. All right, did we... I was using it on a laptop, and my laptop just sucks on Zoom. Yeah. yeah. My, um, the camera on my laptop has like a little, um, switch that goes over the lens of the camera so you can just push it over and i didn't know that so for the longest time i was like why is my camera just showing complete blackness why doesn't it work <laughs> and i figured out it's because it has a little switch on it all right um did we miss anybody anybody want to share before we break for today all right cool so uh, I will see everybody next Monday again for more Sketchbook Summer. I'm going to keep it going all the way through August until um, September. And I'm going to try to do both sides of the sketchbook, but I have that much left to go So for the first half. So I need to keep, keep drawing because I want to fill out this whole thing. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming and for drawing with me. Thank you, Scott, for producing as always. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody.